you got to love it. You absolutely have to love the Tour de France this year, 2024. Man, I love it. All right. Uh, just talk about Tadej and Jonas and Remco's mutant performances. Durin right spec performances up the last climb of the day. Uh, amazing. Beating Pantani's time, Armstrong's time, beating all the greats, setting new precedences of VAM, of Watts per kilo after two weeks of racing. Aggressive racing, hard racing around France, hot conditions, and uh, putting out incredible numbers on the climb there. High cadence, just, just, just absolute. T if you watched a video from 15 years ago, 14 years ago, what I'm promoting on YouTube, high sugar, high cadence, pacing with the power meter, we're seeing that to perfection today. Remco watched my videos growing up as a cyclist. Tadej did, so did Jonas. Ask all three of them. Did you watch Duran Rider's spin to win videos? The answer will be yes. Sugar up, all right? It's just how it is, okay? <laughs> so now it's all come to fruition. Uh, you even have Lantern Rouge. Go check out his channel if you have not have it already. He is uh, w with, with a team, with the Jumbo Visma team, uh, giving some uh, tips and hints and stuff like that. And again, Patrick Lantern Rouge, he came up through the Duran Rider School of Univers <laughs> University of YouTube there. So it's just crazy the influence uh, you can have just from social media. Just me, a, an Aussie bogan, influencing, you know, what we have today in the cycling world. And uh, it, it's cool. It's great. Because what does that translate to? The everyday cyclist. Spin the wind. Kai carb. Smashing the sugar. Pace yourself. You know what I mean? So that's what I love about cycling is it's such a real world sport. You can ride to work, you can ride for transport, you can apply these physiological parameters, these rules into your everyday life and to have an enhanced quality of life. With soccer and rugby and other traditional sports, it's just like, you know, it's just more entertainment, like, you know, like, but the bicycle, that's a lifestyle. You can make money with the bike, you can be an Uber Eats rider, spinning to wind doing your Uber Eats deliveries. You can ride like Remco doing Uber Eats, cadence, carbs, you know what I mean? And winning and fucking winning so we just have uh, this absolute textbook I, I can't fault these guys in terms of their cadence and their sugar intake 150 up to 200 grams per hour of refined sugar where's the diabetes where's the obesity where's the metabolic syndromes you know all the bullshit that the the keto people out there say where's you know you see Tadej tucking in a steak and that during the race the week before the risk of food poisoning is too great so they're like you know so these people, these, these runners will go vegan to cut weight and then maybe in, add a bit of fat and protein in the diet to maintain weight, to, you know? Because if you, you don't want to get, you know, there's a, there's a point you can be too light, okay? And your performance drops off. But then again, with the exogenous hormones coming in, the, the weight can be lower because you've got exogenous hormone support and you're good to go. So not that I'm recommending that, I'm just saying it's pro sport and I think we're going to see some incredible performances at the Paris Olympic Games very soon. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, we're going to see some amazing performances <laughs> at the Paris Olympics. We have some incredible uh, pharmaceutical breakthroughs in hemoglobin support, etc. And we're going to see some, you know, as, as we're seeing in, in track and field and running and already, we're seeing some crazy times getting thrown out there. It's, you know, it's, it's, I love it. It's, I mean, we, we want to see growth. We want to see improvements. That's what Nike, Adidas... You know, that's what you're watching. You want to cheer the winners, all right? You want to cheer the winners. And people like Lance Armstrong, you know, who kicked, really kicked this off in a good way, Lance Armstrong, the legend, people will trash him, but then they'll go and cheer on the current crop of marathon runners, pro cyclists at the top, swimmers at the top, etc., and and, so, and pretend they're clean. You know, <laughs> pretend there's no exogenous hormone support going on there. <laughs> So I find this all really interesting. Maybe it's just my ego. Uh, I told you so. But the thing is, with the I told you so thing, is you win, all right? You win. I've got, that, I've got people out there who absolutely hate my guts. But they're doing my protocols, or some of them. They've ditched their keto bullshit. They're eating less meat, or they're going vegan. Or they go to Thailand. They go to Chiang Mai. Or they, they quit their fucking job they hate, or they do this to do that they'd follow my advice tips and boom good on all right this isn't a popularity contest to me this for me is about sharing the truth that helps you live your best life ever okay that's the facts so Tadej and Remco and Jonas thank you for giving
clout to my recommendations. <laughs> just just personifying it. The cadence, the carbs, the water, you know, just all these things. All these things. If only they could have the power to go back to rim breaks, which all the pro riders would go back to rim breaks like that. The big reason is because the wheel changes are just, you have to do a bike change. And the rubbing rotors and the extra weight and the, the disc brakes locking up, very, very dangerous. So dangerous. So the, the biggest reason I uh, am a, a anti-road disc is because of the danger factor. When you grab those brakes, they can just lock up and slide and you're fishtailing out like we saw with, um, with uh, Primos the other day. But his crash on that corner, that he, he didn't get hurt. But it's just an example of the high speed crashes when they grab a bit of brake, you know, Gino Mata, et cetera, losing control of the bike off the cliff, RIP. And that's, you know, look, look, at, the, look at the fatalities we're having in pro cycling. We, had, we haven't really had that for ages, have we? Two deaths in a year, you know, like that's crazy. Anyway, that's another topic and it's an unfortunate one, but we've got to talk about it. We've got to talk about it because uh, road disc is just fucking dangerous. Tubeless rims uh, for, for, for mountain bike, love it. Yeah, I'm running, I run tubeless on the mountain bike. I run disc on the mountain bike and the gravel bike because I'm running 20, 30 PSI, 25, 30 PSI. But with road bikes, it's just dangerous. We saw it with Tadej the other, other week, his tire rolling off the rim around the corner. And luckily, he was going slow. So it's just the, the bike industry, though. The thing is, Remco, Jonas, Tadej, etc. They're all pawns, and I say this respectfully, they're all pawns for the puppeteers up the top who are making the cash, who are deciding what's going on, all right? These guys are replaceable. If they ever get caught, we just discard them, like we do with Lance Armstrong. Look how much money and entertainment and joy that Lance Armstrong brought us, all right, and still brings us today, yet look how we discarded Lance. Oh, you took exogenous hormones. You've got one testicle. We expect you to win the Tour de France seven times with one nut, you know? Bullshit, not going to happen. Ne never going to happen. You can't win the Tour de France without exogenous hormone support, okay? If, if you believe in unicorns, namaste to you. If you believe you can run the marathons, the world record pace, or win a Boston Marathon clean, namaste to you. <laughs> I've got some real estate in fucking Florida swamp to sell you. You know, so it's just, just if, you can, if you think you can swim the 1500 meter or the 100 meter butterfly or whatever in these world record times without exogenous hormone support, then... <laughs> You're fucking dreaming, brother. And uh, that's just the facts there. So anyway, quick video. Man, this Tour de France has been fantastic to watch. But anyway, these guys, are just, they're just pawns, man. We ditched Lance. We, 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 we trashed these people as a society. Because we the, the average NPC, if you don't know what NPC is, look it up. We're all NPCs until we wake up. Just, we believe in fucking fairy tales. We, we believe whatever the marketing department shoves down our gob puts in our ears, puts in our eyeballs. We believe that as, well, that's the data, that's the science. I'll roll up my sleeve, I'll take any experimental fucking, you know, like, you know, come on, wake up, okay? We live in a world where over 30,000 children die per day from starvation, not enough rice and beans, and they're dying. So if you think that athletes out there aren't replaceable, you just, you dream it, you're living in a la-la land, okay? And people don't want to hear that, and I lose subscribers every time I mention it, but I'm like, fuck it, I'd rather be, I'd rather be, Love, I'd rather be hated for who I am versus love for being fake. You know, that's just me, you know. But anyway, that's the deal. Uh, yeah, these guys, you know, I wish them all the best. I hope they never get busted and I hope they haven't had any crashes in their disc brake bikes, etc. cetera, uh, caused by that. Tour de France is very, very dangerous. The spectators are so close. It's just, you know, it's... Uh, but yeah, we've got to ditch tubeless. Uh, d definitely ditch hookless. That's just fucking, fucking unethical. Hookless road is unethical. I know a guy who worked for Giant, and he quit. He quit because he's like, I can't sell these fucking hookless road bikes. I know how fucking dangerous they can be. Most of the time, you're going to be fine, but what's the fucking point of putting hookless in a fucking road rim? It's fucking stupid. It's unethical. It's immoral. And road disc is like, yeah, that's dangerous. But hookless road, that's just got to fucking go. Adam Hansen, get on it, mate. Fucking ditch this shit.